Welcome to day 31 and I hope you've had a wonderful weekend. Uh, did you manage to join the service at St Mary's yesterday? And I hope you did and you enjoyed uh, the service and everything involved in it and particularly from the personal point of view I hope that the family focus slot was really helpful. Did you work out the pictures from yesterday? You know what we're doing so you know what we're trying to work out uh, the picture which book of the Bible it represents, particularly the New Testament. As it's been the weekend, you, I left you with three pictures on Friday. So picture number 22, here we have one of life's collisions. That's my title for this one, one of life's collisions. So what do we have? We have two men driving. One of them you can see is a Lord, like you have in the House of Lords. And the other one is wearing a crown, it's a king. Now they had a collision in their cars and it sounds a little bit like this book which is another one of Paul's letters to a church. So collision, can you work it out? The letter is of course the letter to the Colossians, the church in a place called Colossae. The letter is about helping us to understand better that Jesus is amazingly our Lord and King. Paul initially describes the completed work of Christ and then he totally demolishes the false teachings that were being spread about, which were declaring Jesus wasn't really God's son. So Paul blew those apart. Then he went on to deal with what Jesus can do through us when we dedicate our lives to him and become a whole new person. So that's Colossians. Picture number 23. Wow, I call this one three yawns, three yawns. Uh, I know it doesn't sound too close, but I think these pictures were the closest that we could get with these pictures. And I know that you've seen two similar pictures to this one. But can you remember which book in the New Testament it refers to? Well, it's obviously one that has three of the same. Uh, I think there is only the one in the New Testament that it refers to. The three yawns is in fact three John, the third letter of John. Uh, when the Apostle John was still alive, many preachers were visiting local believers and preaching the same gospel, the same good news that John was preaching. So he urges the church, he urges them to open the door and welcome these preachers in, welcome their message in. This letter is the shortest one in the whole Bible, but along with his other very short letter to John, John makes an interesting comment. He says he would prefer to talk face to face rather than in writing to them. I wonder what he would have said about social media today, which I guess at the present time is actually one of the ways that we're able to survive with networking and keeping in contact. And so to picture 24, our last one for today, and it's the axes carved out a church in the trunk of the tree. This is perhaps one of the easier books to try and identify. It is in fact the fifth book in the New Testament, it's the book of Acts. And the picture is a reminder that the book of Acts describes the start of the church as the apostles, as those, ones, those who were sent by God, having learned from Jesus, as they begin to fulfil Jesus' calling to spread the good news. They started in Jerusalem and then they were commissioned, they were compelled and commanded to go and spread to the rest of the world. Now the good news as it starts to spread begins with Peter and the beginning of the Jerusalem church, which was mainly made up of Jews, those from Israel. Then the good news, the gospel, spreads to half Jewish people, that's the Samaritans. And finally, Paul, the greatest church planter of all time, takes the gospel, the good news, to the rest of the world, who are mainly, well, in the Bible it calls them Gentiles, that is, non-Jews. And what is so wonderful is the church continues to spread to this very day. So there you have it. There's the three for Friday. And so, to your next three pictures... Now they're for today and 
Well, and I'm quite excited as well because these are your very last three pictures in the New Testament. So even though it's Monday, not Friday, rather than doing one on its own the day after tomorrow, I thought I'll, I'll give you the, the actual e extra one on Monday too. So here are the last three pictures in the New Testament and in the Bible Books Challenge. So here's picture number 25. Again, you should be familiar with this one. It is it's two. It's a, you have seen this one before. And then this next one, picture number 26, here we have. So there's Ian's house in the background. We've got a gull. And, uh, yep, yeah, so there we go. I'm not going to say too much on that one. And then our very final one, the 27th book that we're looking at in the New Testament. Here it is. There. You should be able to work that one out as well. Uh, I hope you don't go by elimination, cross out all the others, but you do try and work out from the pictures. You know what you're doing, working out from the pictures, which ones, uh, which ones the picture it represents in the book, and then hopefully go into the books as well and spend a little bit more time in the book and find out a little bit more about what the book is all about. So there's your last three. Uh, we're virtually there now. We're almost at the end of our uh, Bible Books Challenge uh, that uh, I hope you have stuck with me. And, uh, well, overnight, have fun search hard look don't forget to email me if you've got any questions or thoughts or comments and i will see you tomorrow with the final explanation of the last three so take care